So did you guys know that uh, Phil Lord and Christopher uh, Miller also did the Lego movie? And they did S Spider Man as well into the into the Spider Verse. Please welcome Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. What's happening? I love it. This is like an animation rock concert. <laughs> exactly. I, it kind of wakes you up. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> so please tell them how much did you guys like the movie? I didn't like it. That's a lot! I don't think they liked it. I don't think they liked it. So, um, Aubrey, Aubrey from Miss Gill's fourth grade class at Peabody Charter wants to know, how did you get into making movies? Oh, man. Oh, oh hello. This one's not working. Okay, so this is how I got into making movies. I was in, um, the, in the fifth grade. Uh, uh, the, my elementary school ran out of readers <laughs> and so they would send us to the library and then after we went through all the books we discovered the librarian had a video camera and so we took the video camera out into the quad and started making commercials for the comic books we were selling in the school store we figured out if you turn the camera on and off we could make ourselves appear and, dis and disappear. <laughs> anyway, we made some pretty far out commercials, some pretty psychedelic stuff. I'm sure you guys would be into it. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, similarly, when I was in about fourth grade, same as you, Aubrey, um, yeah, uh, I found my parents' uh, video camera and started making uh, weird short films, one starring my cat, and a bunch of uh, cardboard box buildings of a city. What was the it, name of that film? Uh, it was called The Cat That Ate San Diego. Um, oh my goodness. Poor San Diego. <laughs> it was a very classy film. Uh, it, it, was, it was a very important film as well. Um, Donnie from Ms. Edwards' fourth grade class at Santa Barbara Charter would like to know where did you grow up and did that affect how you made movies? Interesting. Uh, Phil and I grew up on opposite ends of uh, America. I grew up in Seattle. I see some Seahawks fans right yeah. there. <laughs> and Phil grew up oh, in... No, no, calm guys, down. it's okay. Phil grew up in Miami. A uh, very, very different uh, part that, that of America. Yeah, uh, I made f movies in Miami, and I, I grew up in a bilingual household, uh, so that affected, I'm sure many of you guys also, that affected how we made Spider-Verse and, and a lot of other things, um, just understanding what it was like to, to be from another place. So Farley from Ms. Gill's fourth grade class at Peabody Charter wants to know what inspired you to make The Mitchells versus The Machines? Oh gosh, uh, so we got to know uh, our friend Mike Rianda who uh, wrote and directed Mitchells and he wanted to make a movie that was different than any other animated movie that had ever been made before and uh, we really wanted to see how that was going to turn out. <laughs> uh, so we were happy to lend a hand to him and uh, we had such a great time because um, every fiber of his being was in um, it invested in making the movie look and feel different. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, it's about his actual family. The dad in the movie it looks just like his real dad, and so they say, you know, make what you know, uh, but then he also added the idea of a robot apocalypse, which did not really happen in his life. Right, which hopefully we will never know. That's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, but it was really fun and really personal, and we got a chance to, to tell a really fun and interesting story in a totally new way. So this is a nice follow-up question. Charlotte from Ms. Mrs. Gill's fourth grade class at Peabody Charter wants to know, are there characters in the Mitchells versus the Machines based on real people? 
Yes, 100%. The whole family is based on uh, Mike's family. But in a way, the whole crew put themselves into these characters. You know, Katie Mitchell is like a, a, an artsy uh, outsider who wants to make films. And crazily enough, all of us on the crew were also artsy outsiders who wanted to make films when we were growing up. So we all could put a little bit of ourselves into her. And everybody on the crew put a little specificity in there. And that was true for all of the characters. They're all based on real people and then augmented by everybody else. This is a really good question from Sydney, from Mr. Machochi's fourth grade class at Adelante Charter School. Let's hear it for Mr. Machochi's class! <laughs> why did you choose to make the family imperfect? Oh, why did we choose to make the family imperfect? Because we wanted the, we wanted the movie to feel human. And none of us are perfect, but we're all beautiful. And we wanted it to feel like a drawing. The way that when, like, when Chris draws something, I can tell that Chris drew it. When I draw something, it's a little bit different. Nothing in the movie feels machined or made by a computer or perfect. It all feels human. Yeah, and all of our families are imperfect. And, and nobody wants to see a movie about everybody who's not like them. And so you, everyone can see themselves in the Mitchells, even if your family's weird eccentricities are not the same. You see that it's a group of people who are all different and all weirdos trying to figure out a way to get along. Um, Mrs. Baudet's fifth grade class at Peabody <laughs> Charter School wants, wants to know what inspired the idea of Katie being interested in movies. Um, it was, it came from Mike's real life where he wanted to make cartoons uh, and, uh, and his dad wanted him to be a hunter or something uh, and didn't understand what, what his obsession was with it, but it was a thing that he just really became passionate about and uh, found online a community of other people who were interested in the same thing as him and he wanted to make a movie about his dad coming to understand him as his own person and not as the person that he thought he would be. That's great. And I don't know if you guys noticed that there are all the Easter eggs in the movie. Katie's socks is oh, yeah. the, the Shining. That's rug. right. They're from a film called The Shining that you can watch in 10 years. <laughs> um, uh, Kaylee from Ms. Machirchi's fourth grade class at Adelante. How, how long did it take to create each character? Oh, man. So Mike started working on the film six years before it was finished. And we came on three years before it was finished. And none of the characters were really fully formed until the very last year. So I would say five years. Yeah. Wow. Which is, you know, that's a lot faster than it takes to grow a whole person. In real life, yeah. Yeah, so we're already, you know, we're saving money. Um, Liam from Ms. Edwards' fourth grade class at Santa Barbara Charter School wants to know, let's hear it for Santa Barbara Charter School. They want to know, do you have any friends with ideas that help you make the movie? <laughs> oh yeah, we, I got a. By the way, I have a, a friend with ideas right here. His name is Chris. Um, and the thing about this movie is there were 688 friends with ideas that got together to make the movie. There's no idea uh, is a bad idea. Um, Mike, the director, tried to make it safe for everybody to to give their ideas to the movie to make it better. Uh, Ryan from Mrs. Garcia's fourth grade class at Washington Elementary School want to know how do you come up with the ideas for your movies and how do you think of exotic sounds? And there's a PS. He wants to know, can I have tickets to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Um, uh, we have to finish it first. That's true. It's not done yet. We were uh, working on it on the way up. Uh, so, 
the question was, how do you come up with your ideas See, for movies for and movies. sounds? And, and sounds. also sounds. The exotic yes. sounds. Uh, I get my ideas from Chris. And I get my ideas from Phil, um, who gets them from the shower. Um, the, the ideas come at any random moment when you're walking around or seeing the world. You have to look at it as an observer and pay attention to what people are doing, to just sights and sounds around the world. And if you open up your eyes and ears uh, and, and think of yourselves a, a, as observers and chroniclers, you will find all sorts of interesting stories and sounds. I love that um, you asked this question about sound because a movie is half sound. And everybody thinks it's just about the pictures, but half of the experience is what you hear. We spend years crafting what the movie sounds like and trying to figure out what the robot rocket boosters are going to feel like and how that can be its own very unique thing. Uh, Miranda, a f nice follow-up question. Miranda from Adelante Charter School wants to know what is the process of searching for voice actors for each part? Oh, okay, so we have lots of great voice actors in the movie, including Abby Jacobson and Maya Rudolph, and on and on and on, and what they don't know, here's the secret, we listen to their voices without telling them. And then we pick our favorites, and we call them up and say, you're the only choice we've ever thought about for this role. <laughs> But really, we spent a lot of time trying to match a voice to the character and to the images that we were creating. Um, Ella from Ms. Collison's fourth and fifth grade combo class at Alice Shaw Elementary want to know, what was the hardest scene to make? Oh. I'm going to say uh, the Furby scene yeah. with the giant Furby. It was hard because we didn't have the rights to use the Furby toy <laughs> for most of the production. And yeah. uh, Mike had to write seven letters to the creator of Furby and Hasbro, the toy company that owns Furby, to try and get the rights. But on top of that, to try and make something as silly and ridiculous as a giant Furby uh, out for revenge make sense in a story and be part of a story about a family coming together making it work and be interesting and ridiculous and also uh, legally possible. Then we had to make, when then we had to build the giant Furby. Yeah, we had to come up with um, uh, uh, a nuclear power plant to power it because it's really heavy. It's <laughs> I think that last part might not have been true. I don't know about that. Don't, don't, that's not fair. <laughs> uh, Lily from Ms. Collison's fourth and fifth grade combo class. Hi, Lily. Wants to know what is your favorite scene in the movie? Favorite scene? Well, I'll tell you what. The, um, when we met Mike, he said that when his parents drove him and dropped him off at school, he, um, the moment he walked in the door, was the moment he realized how much they had done for him. And he said, I want to make a movie about that feeling. And so our movie ends, you guys just watched it, that ends with Katie walking into school and, um, and the family, even though they're going to be apart for a little while, they're together in their hearts. And I thought he succeeded, and that's my, that moment always makes me cry. Um, Cassandra for Mr. Mr. Machochi's fourth grade class at Adelante wants to know where, where do you create the film? Where do we create the film? Yes. So the main offices for Sony Pictures Animation are in Culver City, California, part of Los Angeles. But there was an animation crew in Vancouver, BC, and artists all over the world who were uh, bringing their stuff in remotely. So people were working uh, in, in countries, states, cities, all over the place. Great, and Elsa from Mrs. Garcia, fourth grade class at Washington Elementary, would like to know, do you make animated movies picture by picture, or do you have several projects going at once? <laughs> yeah. We unfortunately uh, have several things going at once, but every, uh, when there are certain moments when specific movies 
are the, the most important thing that we're doing and we're spending most of our time on them. But we made this movie at the same time that we were uh, finishing Spider-Verse and, uh, and we finished it while we were starting the next Spider-Verse. And, uh, and also while um, we were producing The After Party, which you can see on Apple TV+. Plus. Very nice. Mrs. Baudet's fifth grade class at Peabody Charter wants to know, were there any themes, characters, or ideas that didn't make it into the final cut of the movie? Oh my goodness. Uh, on the Blu-ray, you can see like an hour's worth of cut uh, scenes. There's so many silly, ridiculous jokes um, that while they were hilarious, they slowed down the story and they weren't about the family. One thing that comes to mind is uh, there were a variety of ways that the machines were capturing the humans and one of them was that the cars would give the wrong GPS to the driver and they say, turn right now, and they would turn right and fall off a cliff into the ocean, and then they would come and grab them. Or the robots took over all the TV shows and they made a sitcom called Everybody Loves Killbot. Uh, but <laughs> those things did not make it into the film because they weren't really about the people we really cared about, and when you're making a movie like this, you really have to stay engaged with a, with a family. Mrs. Baudet has a follow-up question. What is your favorite part of making an animated film? Oh, gosh. Um, well, you know, the best part is that you're collaborating with a bunch of other artists, and they all have something beautiful and funny and weird to contribute, and you just feel so lucky that you're around all of these creative, talented people, and you try to, you know, when we're producing a movie, we just try to make it really fun and safe for everybody to, um, to share their ideas. Um, Atlanta Charter School sixth, sixth grade class wants to know, what should I study in college if I want to become a movie animator, director, or producer? Well, the short answer is anything. <laughs> anything you want, because while it's really useful to study film or animation, and there are great schools for that, you have to have something to make the movies about. And so if you are interested in history or literature or science or, or anything, chase that interest and learn as much about that thing that you care about as possible because you're going to be the, the person who's going to be the best equipped to make a movie about that thing. Yeah, I completely agree. We, I was a government major in college. Why? I don't know, but here I am. We make films, and it's great, and I have a lot of uh, interests. They are the best governed films in Hollywood. <laughs> um, you're president business. Yeah, exactly. Um, Samara from Mr. Machochi's fourth grade class at Adelante Charter School Represent. wants to know, do the voice actor decide to make changes to the original script and do you allow, allow it? Yes, absolutely. We hire actors who are writers and, and improvisers themselves so they can bring their own ideas to the thing. It's no fun to just make them say the words exactly as we had them. We, we, we try to get them to embody the role and say the things the way they think their character would say. And if they add something funny or interesting or specific or a good joke, um, it gets to be in the movie. And that's why, we, that's why we choose the people that we do, because they can add stuff to the film. Fantastic. Um, Adelante Charter School uh, fifth grade class wants to know, are you going to make another Mitchell versus the Machines? It's possible. It's possible. Do you, let's put it this way. Do you guys want to see a sequel to the film? Okay, fine. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> if you want it that bad. <laughs> and uh, the last question, Tristan from Mrs. Gill, fourth grade class at Peabody Charter, wants to know, are you currently working on a movie right now, and what is it? We are currently working on the sequel to Into the Spider-Verse called Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. 
part one. <laughs> Whoa. That's right. It's a two-part story, and the first part's coming soon. Excellent. And do you want, guys want them to come back with Spider-Man? Yeah. Excellent. Please thank Chris and Phil for being here. Thank you, guys. Please. Thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Get home safely.